Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart, and today's video is a continuation of my little Warhammer Fantasy Stroke Warhammer Old World project for when that game releases some point, hopefully in the next year or so. And it's a dwarf miniature from Highlands Miniatures. I'm a big fan of these 3D sculpts. They do quite a few different races. And my, my first army for Warhammer coming back to the game is actually going to be all 3D printed using these. Um, I did a little video on that. I'll pop a little link in now, so do check them out. I won't be using them for all my armies. I'm also working in the background on some Empire and some Bretonians, and I plan on using all Games Workshop models for those. But I really, really love the aesthetic of these 3D miniatures, so they're well worth checking out. Especially with so much of the dwarf range currently unavailable, you've got no option but to source in other areas. Now comes some very repeatable spiel that those of you who are a regular subscriber or watcher to the channel will know that I tend to paint an awful lot over a Zenith or pre highlight. Most of that now is because I love to base coat using contrast paint, army paint or speed paint, and now Vallejo Express Color. I just find the whole process more enjoyable than standard base coating with normal acrylics. I also like the effect it gives and the amount of time it can save on some areas or in all areas by providing you with some natural highlights and shades. However, um, I was never a huge fan of the way the miniatures look when you just do a one coat over a plain white prime. I always wanted a little bit more depth there and I found that using a, a Zenithal highlight has a fantastic effect with that. And I have done a little video on how I go about doing that, which I'll pop a link in again now. Um, I tend to dry brush after I've used the airbrush to do this Zenithal Prime as well. So you've almost got a bit of slap chop if you are familiar with the phrase in there as well. But all in all, it just gives you a nice base to work from on the miniature, which means those base glazes, which is what they essentially are, form a really, really nice looking miniature on its own. And it gives you plenty of scope to then highlight further. I'm going to start off with a Vallejo Express colour, and this is Dwarf Skin. Um, not, I haven't chosen it because it's called Dwarf Skin. I just really like the effect it has over the pre-highlighted miniature. And this colour does also go on fantastically over a very flat white. So you want to make sure that if you are using a pre-highlighted method, that you do have a fairly pale surface to work from to get the most out of this. Next up, I'm using some deep purple. This is to add a little bit of warmth around certain areas of the skin. So I'm going to apply it around the nose, around the knuckles, around the elbows. And then this is the same color method that I used on the Dwarf Slayer tutorial. So if you haven't already watched that one, you may well pick up some of the bits are very, very similar. And in a continuation of the previous video's colour scheme, obviously the same army, I'm using Express Colour Gloomy Violet, and this is to add a little bit of shade tone, really. So adding this where the clothes overhang the skin slightly. And for all of these glazes, um, especially the last two stages, I'm thinning the paint um, almost 50-50, maybe a little bit more. And I'm just trying to do a very, very light filter rather than to over kind of colour the, the nice plain flesh skin that we've got there beforehand. Now onto some more express colour and this is Lizard Green and I wanted to choose a colour that was different to what I would often go for for the main kind of colour of the fabric for the army and it will it will run as a theme through the army. And I normally tend to avoid greens for some reason. I tend to enjoy painting reds, even whites and creams and yellows, often the things other people don't enjoy painting. But uh, greens and blues and things I often avoid, so I wanted to pick a nice vibrant green and I thought that this provided a really, really nice base.
And while some of the clothing may vary from unit to unit, I wanted to make sure that green was part of it in a, in a strong way. So I've decided to make sure that the, the green is on the shields as well. Now moving on to some of the leather areas, and I'm using Contrast Garak Sewer, and this is fast becoming my favourite contrast paint, I think. It's such a lovely, dark, rich, inky colour, but where the, the white shows through, you get this sort of really beautiful, lighter-toned brown. And as you can see already there, it does a great job of giving you a, a shade and a highlight without doing too much further. I didn't want to add too many colours to the miniature and the green and the brown being the main ones but I wanted to make the boots a slightly different colour so I'm using Contrast Black Legion. This is the darker and slightly richer pigmented of the two blacks they do. I would say more of the, the earthier, warmer tone compared to the Templar which is a bit more blue. Um, I've just thinned this slightly, maybe added uh, um, two parts um, contrast to one part water. Now onto contrast Naz Drag Yellow and what better colour to stand out from the nice green tops and shields with some nice bright beards and things. Now they won't all be this way but I thought this for this miniature this would stand out really really nicely. There's a small rope band around his leather wrist strap. I wanted to paint that in very quickly, so I'm using Skeleton Horde, and I'll highlight that later with another little bit of white or a little bit of model color dark sand. Then for the metallic areas, I'm using scale colour, so it's scale 75 black metal. And I've got a lot of areas to pick out here. So you've got the chainmail, the rim of the shield, the boss, the helmet, the blade of the axe. There's a few areas I'd like to pick out with gold as well, so I'm using scale colour, scale 75, necro gold. These just add a little bit of difference to the amount of silver on there, so I'm just picking out the buckle of the belt, the ends of the clips on the belt, and there's some little ringlets on the back of the pouch as well. And then adding a little bit of gold detail on the filigree that's on the axe that makes a really nice little touch. Now to shade those silver metallics, I'm actually using Null Oil here. And this is the new formulation rather than the old. I really like the new formulation. It doesn't pull as much. Um, it's better to kind of put in subtly, almost use it as a pin wash a little bit more. Um, you can also sort of glaze it or paint it on a little bit better. I know it's not for everyone the new style, but for the way I paint, um, I think it works really well with a little bit more precision. Saying that, if you do slap it all over, um, it will pull less on those flat areas, so it's a kind of win-win all around. You've got a few areas you want to cover here, so you want to make, make sure that it's going on the axe, but I don't cover the whole axe completely. I'm actually painting it in where it will be shaded. Um, I also want to put it on the chain mail, making, making sure it gets in between all of the links, and that's probably the only area that I give a, almost a full covering. And then also on the helmet and, and the back of the helmet as well, making sure that it pulls more in the recesses rather than on the flat areas. And once that's dry, you'll find that it gives a less kind of dirty, murky look than the previous version of Non Oil did. Um, and while I'm going to highlight it afterwards, you could get away with leaving it as is, and I think that's an improvement. And as I try to do very often with my tutorials, here is your jump off point. So we have just Zenithal highlighted here and then very kind of neat targeted glazes and then painting the metals in and wash the, the silver metal. And this miniature will look absolutely fantastic on the tabletop as it is once based. But we are going to carry on and add highlights as well. So I'm going to use some model colour German Camo Bright Green here and this will be the first of the two colours that I use to highlight the green cloth and the green on the shield. I'm just picking out the, the higher areas here. We've already got a nice kind of multi-tone colour anyway from that green express colour over the pre-highlighted miniature. So I'm really just hitting the, the top areas of those folds um, and being a little bit thicker because I am going to add a thinner line of an even lighter colour in a moment.
And then using the same colour, I'm also just picking out a little bit of the wood grain on the shield. Then with model colour green, yellow, thinning this more than 50% with water, making sure that it's not too thick. I'm just going in and adding a slightly finer line to where I've already highlighted, just to make those areas pop a little bit more. Being very, very subtle here. Again, you can, you can skip this step off if you're happy with the level of highlights on the previous stage. And then all I'm doing here is going back to that Vallejo Express color lizard green and I'm making up a very thin glaze, two parts water to, to one part express color paint. I'm just reinforcing the shadows a little bit and painting a very, very thin area over some of the brighter highlights just to tone it all back and blend it all in together further. To highlight the beard, I'm using two citadel colours, so we've got Avalanche Sunset and Phalanx Yellow. So I start with the darker tone, just pick out some of the more prominent strands of hair. And then again, as I did with the green areas, a slightly thin layer of the brighter yellow on some of the highest points. For the leather areas, I'm going to be using model colour Flat Earth. And this is a really, really nice highlight for that Garak sewer. And just picking out some of those highlighted areas, I don't want to completely obliterate what's already there. The Garak sewer's already provided a very, very nice um, base and, and a mid-tone, even highlight with those pre-highlights underneath. So I'm really just trying to accentuate what's already there. Now the skin is pretty good as it is with the method used, but I'm going to use some basic skin from model color, thin with a bit of medium. And I'm just going to use that to lighten very, very slightly, just on the tops of the nose and the cheekbones. And I will pick out some knuckles and things like that. Now I've thinned this a lot, probably only one part paint to uh, three parts sort of water and medium mix. I really want to be subtle here. And if I do go a little bit too bright, I will use the existing skin shades for express color thinned down to glaze those back as well. So this is getting a little bit more technical than some of the tutorials I do and you really could leave the skin just with the express color stages because it works so well as it was. But I really just wanted to make it pop that little bit more and it doesn't take that long. Now to do the eyes, the, the recesses of the eye sockets are fairly dark from the original Express Colour Dwarf skin. If they weren't dark, I'd probably paint in so either black or some brown areas first. But the eyes are so small on these miniatures that just a little dab of white and then a little dab of black will do. I'm not going to go into detail about painting eyes. It's a trial and error method for many, many of us. And if you do overspill and make the eye a little bit big, it's always good just to kind of paint back in the eye afterwards. Um, around the edges with, with a brown or flesh colour that's matching, something nice and dark and you can easily neaten up what you think is a mistake. Now to highlight the silver areas, I'm using Game Air Silver. Um, this is a quite a thin silvery paint but it's so bright. I'm doing a bit of a mix between overbrushing and dry brushing here. I start with a very side on brush, adding the silver colour to the tops of the chain mail. I really want it to look quite bright and, and sort of really pop on the top. And then as we get to the later areas, so we get to the, the helmet, onto the blade of the axe and things, I use the edge of the brush to pick out the edge highlights, but then I also use a little bit more paint to sort of over brush. I just keep the direction of the brush moving in, in the direction of the colour that I want. And when we get to the axe itself, I brush up from the blade forwards as if that's the way it's been sharpened. areas like on the shield I try to keep the highlight towards the the top of the boss and the top of the shield where the light would show most and now we're really on to the finishing touches so I'll add a little bit of a layer of earth texture to the base then I'm gluing on a couple of pieces of cat sand uh, litter cat litter here and I'm, these are unpainted and they are white so they take the express color paint that I'm going to put on afterwards very well 
And while those are drying, I get some elven gold from scale color just to highlight those gold parts we did earlier on. Just don't tell the dwarf it's elven gold. You can add Rex Earth Shade over the base texture once it's fully dry. Then Express Color Black Lotus over the rocks. Now, because the litter is designed to be porous and soak things up, you may need to just return and splot in the odd color where you seem to get a bit of a hole where the, the paint hasn't soaked in. But once it has soaked in there, you get this really, really nice effect from the, the Express Color going over a uh, what is essentially a white piece of miniature. Um, and it just gives that rock a really nice sort of multi color texture and it couldn't be any simpler now while those are drying on the base i'm going to add a little bit of gore as you have to in warhammer with blood for the blood god I'm just adding a little bit of blood to the edge of the blade i keep brushing this on and then adding a bit of water and playing around with it and taking it off and also add a little bit to the front of the shield as well Now once the base is dry, I brush on some dry light sienna um, pigment. I'm not going to seal this, this just gets into all the crevices. I'll blow the excess off and it gives you a nice sort of dry, dusty environment. And it just doesn't come off once, once you're handling the miniature on the edge of the bases and things. If you're going to apply it to a flat surface and want to stay there, you would need to fix it. But the way I'm using it here um, just adds a really, really pleasing effect. Now adding a few tufts. These are actually two millimeter tufts. I use a lot of smaller scale miniatures, but I think they work very well anyway, um, especially for more arid areas. You don't want really, really strong, long grasses all the time. And these are from War Paint Figures in the UK. And I'm using winter and dead grass here as a bit of a mixture. And then I finish by rimming the base black. And that's my go-to color. I've never been a big fan of the, the colored rims on bases, but you paint it the, the color that matches your army and your scenery and things like that. And there we have uh, the finished Dwarf Warrior from Highlands Miniatures. As I said, I really do like the style and aesthetic of these sculpts. They do actually remind me of the earlier Games Workshop stuff. I know they're not exactly the same, but they feel like Warhammer to me. And I think that's, that's the most important thing. Um, and while Citadel doesn't have the full range at the moment, I'm very happy to make my Dwarf Army out of these. Just sadly means I won't be able to play them up at Warhammer World when I take my lad up there. That's why I'm working on a separate army to do that as well. If you haven't checked out my other videos when I talk about my nostalgia and return for Warhammer, do check them out. I'll pop a few links in the video towards the end here. So I do a video and I talk a little bit about the nostalgia I have for Warhammer my, when I first started and things. And there's a video also on 3D printing this dwarf army that I'm working on now. All in all, I'm pretty pleased with the result for this. Um, it shouldn't take too long, I think, batch painting. I'll get to the stage where one of these will take me no more than an hour, which sounds like a lot, but uh, maybe a little bit less when I batch paint. Um, and then, it, you know, for a, for a fairly high standard army with very basic techniques, really, using the, the Zenderful highlight, I believe helps, especially on the skin. Um, and, and working it mainly from glazers really makes producing a, a fairly high contrast skin quite simple and I really like the way the greens come out it was a bit of a test as I said I don't normally do green um, but I'm pretty pleased with the way it comes out I'm looking forward to getting the rest of the the unit painted and I'll see how they all look ranked up together if you are new to the channel please do check out the other videos there may be something you like there are a few other videos that are warhammer fantasy stroke the old world related now including a tutorial on a dwarf slayer and a tutorial on a skeleton and i'll be working soon on tutorials for bretonian peasant archers and for men at arms i've got those miniatures that i'm working on at the moment and as we get closer to the release of the old world whenever that might be i will no doubt produce more and more videos relating to that uh, my son and i are building and painting armies to play some sixth edition so i'm sure i'll provide some content for that as well at some stage but do have a look around the channel you may well find other things you like as well there's plenty of historical stuff on there from multiple periods and if you do find stuff you like please do consider subscribing and if you've enjoyed the video please do give us a like it definitely helps the video get seen by others and lets me know that you've enjoyed what i've done but thank you very much for taking your time to watch please do comment below let me know what you think let me know what you're working on yourselves take care and i'll catch you soon